Okay guys, in this video segment we're going to talk about pH and how pH can be used to help with this whole idea of ionization of water and hydrogen ions. Okay, So the pH scale, or pH stands for percentages of hydrogen, basically what we're talking about here. And what pH does for us, it allows us to take these very small numbers in terms of hydrogen ion concentrations and bring them into more of a macroscopic world or whole numbers or numbers that are around 1 to 14. Okay, So if we take a look at... The equation for pH, um, we see that there's pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus ion concentration. Again, we see the brackets around there, so we know it's H plus ion concentration. Okay, so if we take a look at what is the pH when H plus equals OH minus. Now, if you remember, when they're equal to each other, your H plus concentration will be 1 times 10 to the negative 7 because that would then equal your OH minus concentration. So that's the only time these two values will be the same is when they both equal 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So if we go ahead and plug that into our calculator now, and if you take the negative log of this, so if we take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, okay, if we do that, we find out real fast that our pH is now 7. Okay, So the point at which they are equal, okay, or the self-ionization of water point, where you just have pure water distilled water, do, using an equation we get that pH of 7, or we get that neutral pH, okay, or the midpoint of our scale. Okay, Now if we take a look at this idea of what is the minimum if we stop calculating when the concentration is 1 molar. Okay. So in terms of equilibrium, if you get much more than a one molar concentration of H plus ions or, or hydroxide ions, you really have kind of broken that equilibrium and you're no longer at equilibrium. So if we had a concentration of one molar H plus ions, okay, so what is the negative log of one? Okay, so go ahead and punch that into your calculator, take a look at that. And when we do that, the negative log of 1 is 0. Okay, so we have a pH scale that goes all the way down to 0. Now, the other side of this is we could end up having um, a hydroxide ion concentration that is equal to 1. So if we had hydroxide equal to 1 molar, what that would mean is that our hydrogen ions would have to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th molar to keep our KEQ satisfied there. Okay, So if we go to the other extreme where hydrogen ions get down to be as low as they possibly can, okay, or as little as they possibly can, so we take this and it's 1 times 10 to the negative 14, negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 14, pH is 14, okay? So you kind of see, hopefully, how the pH scale has been developed and where kind of the ends of the pH scale are set. So our pH scale is really set between 0 and 14. 0 meaning that we have a very concentrated hydrogen ion concentration there. 14 meaning very little hydrogen ions and mainly hydroxide ions. We limit it there because anything more concentrated than one molar of either of those things really is now shifted the equilibrium so far that Le Chatelier's principle can't shift it back in terms of getting it back into an equilibrium. So we've kind of broken the equilibrium at, after those points there. So we kind of stop at the one molar point for either of those concentrations. Now it doesn't mean we can't get more concentrated acids, it just means at that point those concentrations are then, you know, are putting our pH or the pH scale really isn't used at that point because it's so concentrated. Okay, so let's take a look at our pH scale. Um, here's your hydrogen ion concentrations. Here's your scale. Acidic is anything that is less than 7. Basic is anything that's greater than 7. Okay, increasing hydrogen ion, increasing hydroxide ions. That's our kind of scale. Please make a note of this. This is kind of one of those little things that I kind of have a quirk on. Um, when we talk about the pH scale, you have to be very careful because anything greater than 7 is base. Anything less than 7 is acid. So unless you're exactly at 7, you're not neutral. 
Okay. Sometimes people will get caught in saying, well, you know, if you have the PA, the base scale is from 8 to 14. Well, no, that's not actually true because a 7.5 is still a base. Well, then they'll say, well, then it's, you know, it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, 7.1 to 14 is a base. But, well, what about 7.04? Okay, so anything greater than 7, please use the right uh, kind of limiters there. So anything greater than 7 is a base, anything less than 7 is an acid. Okay, take a look at our scale here, just kind of give you an idea of different things out there in terms of acids and bases. Household lye, really strong base. Uh, blood, very specific uh, pH there. Um, if, if our blood chemistry gets off of this very, very specific, very slightly basic pH that can cause major problems in our biology. Um, our saliva, pure water is the only thing that's really seven. You know, coffee is acidic, acid rain, anything less than this is acid rain. So beer, orange juice, apple juice, vinegar, pop, lemon juice, uh, gastric acid is your stomach acid. Okay, so that kind of kind of switches there. And then battery acid uh, to give you an idea of where our pH scale kind of runs. So um, Anything from 0 to 14 is basically what we're looking at there. Now, what about OH? So if we have pH, we should have an OH concentration calculator also. So there's something else out there called pOH. It's not something that you're probably as familiar with, but it's the exact same scale, it's the exact same calculation, um, except for it allows us to actually calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions instead. Okay, so if you take a look, the pOH, the percentage of hydroxide, is equal to the negative log of the OH minus concentration. Okay? Now the beauty is this, if you know one, you always know the other. Because if you take the two values, the pOH plus the pH, it equals 14. Okay? So whenever you're working with these, if you know the pH, you can find the pOH, which then you can find the OH minus concentration. So it's kind of like ways of different pathways you can use to find different pieces of information for this process. Okay? Now, if we take a look at all the equations that we've done so far and put them together into one spot, here's what we got. We say Kw, or the equilibrium constant for water, is your hydrogen ions plus hydroxide ions. This, this value is always 1 times 10 to the negative 14, so it's got to be. Here's your pH equation. Now, what I've done next to that, if you're not comfortable, again, working with logs and how you actually manipulate log functions, uh, sometimes you know the pH and you're solving for H+, plus. so the rearrangement of this equation right here, the rearrangement is here. So 10 to the negative pH will give you hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, it's kind of a useful one. Same thing down here. pOH is negative log of OH-, minus. so the rearrangement is 10 to the negative pOH will give you hydroxide ion concentration. And then last but not least, your pOH plus your pH equals 14. Now if you look, we have one equation to link the two together. We have a second equation to link the two together. And then we have two equations to go from concentrations to pH or concentrations to pOH. So no matter what information I give you, there's always a pathway to solve for an unknown value here. Okay? This slide's kind of a good one. You might want to like highlight this one or circle it or something. It kind of brings you back all your equations in one spot to help you as you're going through your practice problems. Okay? So here we got our practice problems. We have a solution that has a pH of 1.86, okay? And what we want to do is we want to solve for uh, the hydrogen ion concentration, then we want to calculate the pOH, and then calculate the, the hydroxide ion concentration for this, okay? So what I'm going to do is give you guys a minute to go ahead and work this out on your own, go back to those equations, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll take a look at the answer key for these, okay? So go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we have the uh, pH of 1.86, and we're going to look at solving for the hydroxide ion concentration. So we know that pH is equal to the negative log of H+. Plus. Okay? But in this case, we know the pH, and we're solving for this. So we need to use a rearranged form of this. So pH, or sorry, 10 raised to the negative pH equals hydrogen ion concentrations. So this rearranged can solve for this. Now all we need to do is plug in our pH. So the pH in this scenario is 1.86 and 10 raised to the negative 1.86 will give you your hydrogen ion concentration. So if we do that and we solve, we see that we get a value of 1.38 times 10 to the negative 2. 
Remember, pH is a measured value, so it does apply to our significant figure rules as we do this math. Okay. Now, the second part is calculating the pOH of this process. So we have the pH, and we have the hydrogen ion concentration. So there's two different ways you can do this, but probably the easiest is to remember that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. Okay? So we know that 14 minus pH will then equal pOH. So we get 14 minus 1.86 will give us our answer. Okay? So again, take 14, subtract away the pH, that will give you what your pOH is. And again, if we do that math, we see that we get 12.14. Okay? 14 is not a measured number. Okay, 14 is a standard endpoint for our uh, scale, so that is not part of your significant figure calculation, but the 1.86 is. So since that's to the hundredths place, your answer should be rounded off to the hundredths place also. Okay. Now the last part of this practice problem is calculating the OH minus concentration. Okay. So again, we have two ways of doing that, and I'm going to show you both. Uh, first way is we know that KW is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And we know that is equal to the hydrogen ions times the hydroxide ions. Okay? So from the first part of this problem, we know the hydrogen ions, so we can insert that here. And we can just solve for hydroxide ions here. So we can take the 1, point, or 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1.38 times 10 to the negative 2. And that will give us our hydroxide ion concentration. So that's one way of doing it. Now the other way of doing it is we know the pOH is 12.4. So we know that 10 raised to the negative pOH would equal our hydroxide ion concentration. So here's one way of solving it. Here's the other way. So the other way, you take 10 to the negative 12.14, and that would also give you the correct answer. There really is no preference on which one you use. Uh, either way will do it. Some people don't like all this scientific notation, so they'll probably avoid this. Some people don't like using powers or logarithms, so they'll avoid this. Either one gives you the same answer, okay? And if we put that in, here's your two possibilities. Uh, so negative log of OH minus 10 to the negative 14.14 gives you 7.24 times 10 to the negative 13th. If you do the KW equation, again, 7.24 times 10 to the negative 13th gives you both of those things, okay? Now, we're going to stop here. This ends the video segment. Thank you.